Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek at thelandgeek.com, and today I have with me Yep, you guessed it. The man living on the beach in Carlsbad, California, severely sunburned from surfing yesterday. Nothing pleases me more when Duran Frazier from Reserve Land and RuralPropertyFinder.com is in severe pain. Duran, how are you feeling? I am hurting, Mark. I mean, sitting in a chair talking to you hurts worse than my, my back pain, but, it, you know, I'm cool. Yeah, there's this new thing out in the marketplace called sunscreen. Never heard of it. What does it do? It's it's, it's, it's incredible. It, it protects you from the UV rays. UV. Okay, I'll check. I'll take a look at that. Interesting. Yeah. But you know what? Let's not talk about your poor judgment when dealing with the sun and the ocean surfing. Let's talk about what people want to hear about. And so I'm getting a lot of emails lately, and this podcast is going to be Strictly about getting started. Newbies. Newbies welcome. And most of you know our story. But if you don't, I started with $3,000 and no real estate experience and uh, just a lot of uh, nerve. Durant started with even less, $800. And you, you had no background in real estate, correct? Absolutely none. Right. So neither one of us had taken a real estate course. Um, Neither one of us worked in brokerage, had any real estate background whatsoever. Um, Nevertheless, we were both drawn to the siren song of land buying. And my big thing, you know, the way I did it was I convinced my wife to take like our last $3,000 in savings and buy land because I said, worst case scenario, if we can't sell it, at least we own land. So I'm not buying it, Mark. I'm not buying it. You know what? You were an investment banker. There's no, and you were, and you were probably darn good at it. There's no way you had three grand in the bank. Come on, dude. No, I really did. You, I really did. 3000 savings. Cause I'll tell you what happened with, with, uh, you know, being an investment banker or business broker is that you'd have to save. So, you know, you might do a big deal, right? And it could be a six figure commission, but it's such a long sales cycle that at that time, I mean, I was making, you know, very little salary, like $2,000 a month plus commission. So you had to do a big deal and save every money, every dollar that you had save for living expenses. So there was nothing really discretionary left over for anything else. So that's all I had was $3,000 for anything else. Wow. I'm impressed. Yeah. I, I was in college uh, and you know the story, but I had to borrow 500 bucks from my mom and sister and uh, took 800 bucks that I had in the bank, and uh, off I went. So, yeah, we both have similar backgrounds and stories, which is pretty cool. Right. So people are asking me, how much do I need to get started? What would you say you need to get started? You really don't need anything to get started. You don't, right? Because you could just quickly wholesale a deal out. Correct. Correct. And, you know, the interesting part about the Internet today and where it wasn't in 99 or 2000 was – you could put out some emails. You could market something. Quick. We didn't have Craigslist in 1999 or 2000, 2001 when I got in the business. So it wasn't as simple as it is today. You can find it. You could literally find a buyer in an hour with a piece of property, whereas maybe 10 or 12 years ago, it wasn't that simple. So there's a lot of tools to your advantage that you could use it, uh, in, in this day and age that could literally close a deal without having to spend a dime. Right, right. I mean, literally, um, you could probably spend about $100 on a on a letter writing campaign, right? Correct. And just make offers. Get those offers back and then go to somebody like me or Duran and flip it for what? Ten percent, fifteen percent markup? Yep. Make make a couple thousand dollars without literally putting any money out. Just finding the deal. And you could also you could also comb several other websites, Penny Saver, Craigslist, know the market, understand it, get a feel for what you're trying to Look for whether it's Texas land or Nevada land or California land and find find market values 
and from there, maybe find a deal online and make a quick offer. Tell them you'll do an option contract and, you know, for a hundred dollars on the land and uh, you, give, you take a 30 day contract and you have, you know, and you, you have to, you have an option price of, let's say, you know, four grand and you end up getting a sale of eight or 10. Right. And, right. So, okay. Let's explain the difference between an option and a regular agreement. So the option agreement gives you the option of buying that property. And typically there's an option fee with it. I typically offer 50 bucks. What do you have for your option fee agreements? Mine are generally a hundred dollars. I'm a little, but again, it isn't between you and I is, there you go. hundred percent. You're so, you're so generous. <laughs> hundred dollars. Okay. So, but ba so we're saying you don't need anything, but in this scenario, you need at least a hundred dollars to get started. Correct. Yeah, but we can't say hundred dollars is much money. I mean, if you can't, if, look, if you can't get hundred dollars from your friend or your neighbor or somebody, and you don't have the money, I, this may not be. Yeah, but that's yeah. That, then we're being disingenuous. We're saying you can start with nothing. Let's what, let me let's just true. let's look at a, a deal where you can start with nothing, and then we'll go to the option. Okay, okay, true. All right, let's. Okay, you're a newbie. You've got literally nothing. Obviously, you've got to have something because you've got a computer. You're listening to this podcast. If you can afford a computer, you could probably afford, you know, to do this. Nevertheless, let's just assume that you have zero money set aside in savings. You're living so tight month to month. There's nothing to do except figure out with your resources and your guts and your determination, your grit, how to get a deal and make some money. How, how would you do that? How would you structure it? Are you asking me that question? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know what I would do, but I'm just asking what you would do. <laughs> you know what? It's been so long since I had to worry about that. I don't know. Why don't, <laughs> why don't you answer that question? I mean, that's, you know, to be honest with you, I, I don't know. I think there's so many ways you could start. That's that's the, the benefit, right? Looking looking at today's market, if I had no money, right. I would be, with my internet knowledge, I'd be looking at different websites, Oodle, all the sites that you wouldn't necessarily find. You know, the land watches and the... Lands of America sites aren't going to necessarily find you the great deals. You got to look where people, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe classified ads in newspapers, places where people don't really understand the value. Don't forget land is different than a house, a single family home. And it's, and some people have a hard time judging what the value of their land is and they'll put it for, let's say 2000 and it's worth five or six, or they don't know what the market is. So that's probably, uh, you know, that's how I would start. I would look at places that I would think others wouldn't look on the retail side. Yeah, yeah. I I might start a little differently. I might actually look for somebody that wants to buy that wants to buy land, right? I'd go to them first and say, Duran, I know you're a land." You know buyer. what? Stop right there. Stop right there. Why do you always one up me, Mark? Why do I'm you I'm not one upping you. You always have to sound smarter than me and I can't stand it. <laughs> do you really feel like I'm one upping you? No, it's okay. Go ahead. Do you want to talk about it? No, I don't. I'm not one-upping you. I just think, <laughs> just because I think differently doesn't mean I'm one-upping you. I'm Maybe your idea is a lot better. Probably not. Go ahead. Okay, all right. So this, this is what I would do. I would look, I'd go to somebody like you and say, look, for this amount of money, call it $100, okay? I'm going to go out and I'm going to provide you deal flow because I know that you'd rather surf than do it yourself, okay? And... Which county are you focused on? And knowing you, you would say some county in Nevada. But, so let's just say Lander County, Nevada. So you'd say, okay, fine. I'll give you $100 to do my letter, my letter writing campaign for me. Plus, I'll give you 10% of the profits that I make on the deals that you find me. Zero money, right? Mm -hmm. I'm partnering with somebody. And even though I don't have any track record, I'm doing all the real hard work, which is making the offers, doing the due diligence, bringing it in. So all I really need is a little bit of knowledge on due diligence and the, I guess, the guts to email you or call you or someone like you that I know is in the land business to provide them deal flow. No, we're no, mo no money down. And then after I do a couple of deals with a professional who I know is going to make money, I've got money. Now, now I can go and do uh, my own deals. Now, let's just get something straight here. A letter writing campaign costs money, doesn't it? No, you're providing me the, the money for the letter writing campaign. Okay. So basically what we're telling everybody here is, look, at the end of the day, you've got two guys that will help you do deals. 
And you probably want to go to me first because Mark obviously is a little cheaper than me. Um, and, <laughs> yeah, based on my and, option offers. And, and I will and I will squeeze extra money out for you. So come to reserveland.com. You write me an email and I'll help you with no money out of your pocket. Go to Mark and need at least $50. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is just an example. This is just an example. Okay, okay. Right. But I mean, that's just one example. No, I agree. I agree. There's right. it's, it's, it's it's endless. There's so many opportunities and and ways to find land. I mean, look, there's there's land everywhere. There's land right. from Alaska to Hawaii to the East Coast to the West Coast to you know the Midwest. There's so much. There's so much land out there for sale, and there's so many reasons why people sell land. Divorce. Right. Uh, they're broke. They inherited land. They they need to just get rid of it. They have no clue what it's worth. There there there's deals are out there all the time. Whereas a single family home, they go to a realtor and say, what's my house worth for the hundred grand? Great. Sell for a hundred grand. So it's, it's a little different than it, than it was, um, you know, or, or than it, than it, than it is with a single family home. There's so many opportunities out there. You have to just know the market. So it takes a little research and a little time, but they're, they're everywhere. Yeah. I, I would never flip a home again. It was a miserable experience for me. I made money and it was still miserable. Mm-hmm. I, I literally couldn't stand having to go every single day and drive 20 miles and meet the subs, make sure they showed up on time, did the work we asked them to do. And there's so many fees involved in the home flipping. Yeah, I mean, every, I, Everyone's got their hand out. I mean, land is just so much simpler, easier. No termites, no tenants, no toilets, no headaches. You can't destroy mm-hmm. land. Oh, I guess li- you could burn uh, it, but that's No it. liability. No liability, or very little liability. Yeah, you're right. All right, so I'm a newbie. And let's get back to it. So we could you could partner. That's one way mm-hmm. to do deals. You could bird dog deals, no money. You get started that way. Um, another way I think would be just providing, you know, just doing an option, and you know maybe a dollar option even. I mean, if you find the right guy who is desperate, you know, mm-hmm. because they don't they don't they just want to sell their property. They don't really care about the option. If you tell them in the next ninety five days I'm going to find you a buyer, they'll do it. Right. Yeah. For a yep. buck, like, or, I, even, you know, as, or a zero down option. I, I I think you're probably better off offering zero than a dollar. Just my that's my two cents. Maybe I'm wrong. I would rather I'd rather somebody tell me they're going to do something for me for free than say here I'll give you a dollar. Yeah, I, I guess you're I, right. So, uh, but yeah. Now, I, now I, who's one upping who? No, I'm not saying anything. I'm just I'm. Uh, you're right. I just did. I'm sorry. Okay. So anyway, but yeah, I, I agree with you, Mark, 100% that, that there are so many, there's so many avenues or ways to structure it. Um, you know, we, we've both done it with a lot, a lot less uh, resources available to us. So Right, right. And you know what? And this isn't ideal. I mean, let's face it. Save some money. You know, how hard is it to save $1,000? It might be hard. I shouldn't say it like it's that hard to save $1,000. It could be hard to save $1,000. But that's that's really what you need to do to really get going because you don't want to have to – you don't want to limit your options. I mean, if you could just get started with $1,000, don't you think that would be better than having to create deal flow for somebody else and wait? What of course think? it would. No, of course it would. I think the other, the other thing we have to mention to the listeners is that, you know, one of the biggest problems with buying a product from someone online or a – infomercial is that most of the people that buy a product never follow through. And what, what we're trying to help you guys do is follow through with just even listening to us and writing notes and taking, you know, take, getting an understanding of what's, what the availability is out there from a land perspective. You know, we don't care. Mark and I don't care that your competition to us, it's not a big deal, but teaching people kind of how to do it. If, if you spend the time, if you motivate yourself, it, I, I get, you know, I have the conversation with my mom and I, and I say, Hey, you know what, you know, just, you got to do this or you got to do this. And she, I, I can't. And th- those two words, I can't, if those two words come up and with my children, it's a bad day. It's a bad day. Cause I can't, it's not in their vocabulary. So that's just how, how I am as a, as a motivated entrepreneur. I know that Mark is the same way I can do anything I want. And so you guys have to train your brains to do anything. Don't say I can't, or I don't have the money because you can get the money. Um, right. What, whether right. it's a, whether it's Mark or me, and I'm not trying to be Tony Robbins, but but if I can be to you, great. I, I just want people to realize that it's not that hard. You just have to go out there and make it happen. No, I told you know what I totally agree. And and when someone tells me they can't do something, 
I always look at them like, you realize we just put a little, you know, rover on Mars. We went to Mars. Did you ever see that video? Nothing is impossible. Anything worth doing is possible these days. There's 3D printers. There's self-driving cars. These people are no smarter than you are. They just figured this stuff out because they spent time. It's just about spending time. I love uh, that Malcolm Gladwell book, uh, Outliers, and he talks about the 10,000-hour rule. You can become an expert in anything if you just spend 10,000 hours. So that's 10 years, 8 hours a day, right? And you're an expert. So technically, we are now experts in land. That is, that is awesome. You know, it's interesting, too, is when you sit down with somebody and you have the knowledge you have about your particular industry, you know, you may talk to a doctor. And I've, I have a, I, you know, I, I run in circles with a lot of friends that are doctors. And I happen to talk to these guys that, that will, will say, hey, so what do you do for work? And I'll talk to them about, you know, something entrepreneurial or real estate or land. And they're baffled. They're like, wow. And people are always intrigued to know what you do. Like, it's not a, it's not just about, well, I'm trying to get involved in this or get involved in that. They want to know a lot of like doctors don't find themselves that much smarter than you. They're just, they just have expertise in what they do. So you have to always, you know, keep in mind that people are intrigued by the fact that you're out there trying to buy land or you have an idea of buying land and listen, they may have, you, you may find a doctor that has an idea for you. So. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, one of my investors is, a, is an ophthalmologist, never met him just sends me money because he wants me to invest for him. And does, uh, does it's he great. Need any, does he need other uh, investors? Because I, I like paycheck or I like checks that you, are in my name. You want some investors? I just want some money. Just, you, you just want me to send you money? Yeah, that's cool. I'm a, I'm a nonprofit, 501c3. I see. <laughs> <laughs> so if you just want to send Duran a check because you like the way he talks on the podcast, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go to reserveland.com. He'll put a little PayPal thing up and just send him money. Uh, buy now, buy it now, buy it now. Okay, let's let's stop being so silly. Okay, right, let's get back to it. All right, so you're a newbie, and there's a couple ways now that you can literally get started with no money down. We do recommend that you have some money, ideally, to get started. It'll make things a lot easier. You'll become much more profitable faster would you agree with that duran or what do you think not not necessarily but as i always tell somebody with money the more money you have the more confidence you have the more you're probably going to be creative and find find ways to make things happen right right so even if you start with a thousand dollars i tell i tell people you know ideally i'd like you to start with at least five thousand dollars you can you can you know do a lot of different things with just $5,000. But no worries, you can still do this. And there's lots of different ways to get started. Wholesaling, partnering, bird dogging, whatever you wanna call it, with no money down, as long as you're willing to do a little bit of work, right? I agree. Okay, so I'm glad we got that figured out. So it is possible to get started inland no money down. Now, some people say, you know, why not do single family homes, no money down? I, I don't even know how that's possible. How do I mean, you just leverage a house and their assets or you get the owner to finance you. That's another thing is you can, you can do owner financing hundred percent and there's, that's a no money down deal. Correct. Yeah. And, and a market and you know, it's all market those, dependent. Those aren't so really realistic. Y- these they're days. not, not, not today. Um, you know, what's interesting is it's funny. I say not today, but a year and a half ago when the market was sort of dead, you could have been creative and made something work if you found the right seller. Today's market, I mean, you put a house in the market for 300 grand, it sells for 400. So, and, you know, and market value may have been 300, but people are paying, you know, I heard, I've, I've heard of hedge funds paying 50,000 over, over asking for some of these homes here in San Diego because they're just renting them out. So it, it, today's market is very interesting, but yes, in, in a market that's down where, where we're in a, in, in a you know, buyer's market, not a seller's market, you have the opportunity to buy a home and get creative. But in a market like today, you know, a sell, if a seller did that, they wouldn't be very intelligent. Uh, they would go list the house with a realtor and, and get, get their money. Right, right. Okay, so what would be your advice to somebody saying, okay, I just want to get started in land? What's like the first thing you'd have them do? I would probably research, I would probably research on, on, on several levels, but I'd probably research, understand 
like real estate 101, understand the basics. What what is land? You know, I, I and I don't know if there's. I think there's a site called Lynda.com. We talked about. Yeah, Lynda.com. You can learn pretty much anything there. Yeah, I think why, why not get started with with the pod like our podcast? No, I that that would be great. I mean, uh, you know, listening to Mark and I talk, and then Mark has, you know, I think Mark is a program that you know I help him out with, and and I think with with those programs there are ways that, that obviously if you have no money, um, you know, you have people like resources like Mark and I that can help you. Right, right. So there are you know there's free resources if you want to save yourself a lot of time, you can always you know get my investors toolkit, which is due diligence, marketing, copywriting, uh, deal flow, and then creating your virtual assistant team. But I'm assuming that you just literally have nothing right now to start except just motivation. So I think the first place you could probably go and get free information would probably be either YouTube, lynda.com, and just start learning about, in the internet, and just le start learning about researching and doing due diligence. I would start with due diligence, wouldn't you? Before you 100%. get into marketing and, and uh, deal flow? Of course. Yeah, because you don't want to make a mistake when you first your first deal out of the gate and end up losing money. That that would be a, just a nightmare. Or or put yourself in a situation where you've, you've said something that you shouldn't have said, which is, you know, mineral rights attached to the land and they're not, and then the buyer comes after you. And so there's there, you have to understand the basics of land. So just knowing... Uh, you know, from from what you know, what an acre is, how many square feet to what a section of land is, that kind of stuff. Right. So just get your language vocabulary, and there's tons of free information now, um, out there. Yep. And we'll and we'll be doing. Uh, Mark and I will both be working on it, but um, freelandreport.com, which will hopefully launch here in the next couple of months. Uh, we're going to put out a monthly newsletter with uh, with basically some. And again, it's not a plug. It's just I think it's going to be helpful for people. To get out to get out there and, and understand where the market's heading, what's going on, some statistics, kind of a nationwide guide to buying and selling land. Right, right. So speaking of the market, how are you feeling about the market these days? Yeah, that's a tough question, Mark. Um, I, you know, one one week I think it's up, and the next week I think it's down. You know, it's so interesting. I look at I look at sort of the the global global economics, and I get a little nervous. But it was so interesting is that land in a down economy, land is now seems to be a little bit more intriguing to the investor because obviously as the equity markets or the stock market is at an all time high, people start going. And most of the people that are making money in the market today aren't the guys like you and I. So but these investors are now looking at, at alternate alternative uh, investments and land being one of them. Right. Uh, so, I, you know, I like I like the the three to five year and to 10 year outlook on land, you know, we may have our ups and downs and we may have, you know, even a down year if the stock market tanks and we know that there's, it's inevitable that there's going to be a correction at some point. Um, there, there may be some big changes, but uh, you know, to, to, to own land, you know, there's still a lot of buyers out there looking for a thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollar piece of land. You know, I, I've actually, the last few days have been really busy for me as well, selling land again. So it's interesting, but you know, going back to it, it's, it there's always a market for it. So regardless of where the market's heading, I just see that, uh, you know, with the Internet and everything else, there's a way to market land and find a buyer. Right, right. And that, you know what? And this is like my big pet peeve with real estate gurus is that, you know, you ever watch those, uh, I forget who it was. Was it Carlton Sheets? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, he's like on an island. Yes. And the subliminal message is, you know, you're going to make millions of dollars in real estate and you're going to have this huge lifestyle big cars big boats big houses and maybe you own your own private island right and when you get started nobody ever tells you you know what real estate's cyclical i mean it is we can always look at real estate and look in like, like 10 year cycle and during that 10 years there's gonna be five years that are going to be you can just work 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 and it's gonna be fantastic and then there's going to be three years where you can just spend time on the golf course. There's just no deals to be had because the market is just too high to buy, right? That's what I you're just, selling. I, and, then, and then two years to, to to figure it out again. What do you can think? I, can, I, can I agree to disagree? Sure. Um, I just look at the market today as being 100% manipulated, meaning uh, – and, and the land market can never really be manipulated other than the fact that creative financing can can be – tossed out, which is what they're trying to do. 
So the government has come in and said, look, okay, we're going to control the housing market, which they have. Um, I'm not sure where you live, but but the REO market and the short sale market nationwide is very interesting if you watch it. The deals being done, or the, the deals behind behind closed doors, the 100 homes, 200 homes, 500 home REO tapes being sold to these big banks and hedge funds. Those are the deals being done, and those are off-market deals that aren't appraised. So these guys are buying houses for 20 cents, 30 cents in the dollar, and they're holding them, holding on to them long term. And in, in the process, the, the REOs that are coming on the market and the short sales are being approved at very low rates. So you have these, so you have the, these homes trickling on. So what it's done is it's killed inventory, and 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 then they and then what the Fed has done is they've bought mortgage-backed securities. And that's pulled rates down. So you push these rates, you you artificially push rates down so that you bring in this buying pool of people so they can all afford a home from a payment perspective, right? And then you you have no supply, so you drive the, the demand is obviously increased and home prices go up. So what does that do? Well, the banks now now their now their books look they look they look a lot better because they had a home that was 1.5 million dollars that was now worth that was worth 700 grand is now back to 1.4 or 1.5 or 1.6. I mean, I've seen homes in San Diego right now selling for higher than they sold at the very peak of the market in 2007. Yeah, so, yeah, but don't you think that that's a bubble? That's that's a that's that's not a correct. Yeah. Correct. But what I'm what I'm saying is it's it's a manipulated cycle. So ordinarily, an un you know an um an unmanipulated if that's a word cycle of of home, of home buying and selling is does not involve the Fed, um, does not involve the banks. Um, I mean, short sales and REOs are are cyclical, but not being controlled. So, and now the real but, estate's cyclical. There's, but, it's a market. But the what markets I'm, are cyclical. Yeah, I, but what I'm saying is that it's a it's a manipulated. So, so last year, like we had a cycle. So, 09, 2009, 2010, when the market dropped, and on, at the end of 08, beginning of 2009, we had a, we had a cycle of of down of down years. So we didn't have people weren't buying land, people weren't buying homes. Then 2011 kind of started heating up. 2008, people weren't buying anything. No, toward the end, to, middle of 2008, people were still buying. Toward the end of 2008, everything stopped. That's where everything stopped completely. But when you got back into what I'm saying is that, and, and we could talk about the cycles. I'm just saying that to me, it's not a natural cycle. So it's a little harder to predict. Now, here's what I am saying is that land to me is now we're looking at land a lot differently. I don't believe it's the same as looking at a at a residential home cycle, but more as a cycle that that is seen as it's a it's a it's a more of a an investment that you want to hold on to for a long period of time that you're not trying to buy hold or, and flip. Yeah, you yeah, but to- yeah, but my my point is is that even land is not always just always going to go up. It's a it's a market, so you need to to have a cushion. Agree. You need I- to have a cash cushion, is what I'm saying. Okay. So my I'm saying is that okay. Let's say. Your first year in land, you've got a great market, and you make three hundred fifty thousand dollars, right? Yeah. My advice to you is not to go out and buy a million dollar house. Okay, I agree with you. With the assumption I, that the next year you're going to make four hundred fifty thousand dollars. I, I agree. Need, you need to have a cushion. I, I agree, and I thought I thought so. I'm arguing the real estate aspect of it. You're talking about the business aspect. I'm talking about the business aspect of okay. it. I'm saying that you know. 100%. Yeah. So you're you're never going to see. You know, me t- saying, you know, get the investor's toolkit and you're going to make a million dollars a year forever. Yeah. You know, you can make a lot of money buying and flipping land, but it's still a market. You still have to have a cushion. No, I you agree. still I always have to have that plan B, which is why I have other people um, on the podcast to bring out other, you know, ideas. So my point being is that you've got to be conservative with your finances, knowing in advance that this is a market and inevitably every market has a dip and that you need to have money saved for that dip. And Mark and I have been hurt uh, immensely by the downturn. Um, Oh, it was terrible. For for those that don't know, and we'll talk about another podcast, Mark and I in 2008, 2007 actually started for us with land, but but I I got married in 2007. I had my first child in 08, and that was probably timing-wise horrible for me uh, because everything has sort of happened right as I got married and had my first child. So I thought it was very interesting, you know, looking at looking at 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 something and not preparing myself. Um, and I and I did. I mean, I think Mark and I were a little bit more intelligent than the rest of the the buyers and sellers out there. Well, you, um, know, you know, you know, why we're still in business compared to our competitors is we never got we never got over leveraged. 
that Agreed. was that was the best thing that we did. Agreed. Yeah, we never over leveraged ourselves. I mean, we were paying both of us were paying nine percent on some very hefty multi million dollar notes, but Mark and I also knew how to creatively get ourselves out of debt or or move things over, move things around, and get us get ourselves in a in a place where we weren't, you know, we we weren't torched by this market because we, I mean, we saw a lot of people that we knew very close that lost everything. Oh, uh, so, I, I I mean, I'll tell you a quick story. I knew a guy who had literally a hundred million dollars of raw land in uh in a golf course development in Arizona, and he started developing. He literally lost everything, everything. To go from a hundred million dollars to zero, I mean, I don't, I don't think we'll ever see a real estate market like that ever again. I mean, that was the Great Depression without the bread lines. Would you agree? I mean, that was really severe. I don't think I personally, I disagree. Um, Do you think I, we I, could see something like that happen again? A hundred percent. Oh my gosh. I, I, but, but here's why. I'm scared. I, I believe, but it's not a bad thing. Here's the great thing: you own land. That's that's the best asset you can have. No, so, no, I, I agree, but you still want to have an asset that doesn't lose fifty percent of its value overnight, right? Yeah, yeah I yes, I mean, again, what, what are you buying? I mean, who's buying a you know a three acre piece of land for fifty thousand dollars unless you actually plan on developing it? So, you know, if you look at land today now and look at it five years ago, guys, people were paying two hundred grand for ten acres or five acres, right? And it and I just it's not that valuable anymore because what the the, the most difficult part of that parcel is actually developing it is spending the money to, to, you know, subdivide and survey. And so there's a lot more involved now where you look at a piece of land and if you're really buying a piece of land for a hundred, hundred grand, um, unless you're buying, you know, 50 subdivision lots or 200 subdivision lots, there's really a lot more risk, but you're, it's, it's, you're yeah, more risk averse. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not playing in our niche anymore. If you're doing that, yep. you're just not, you're, you're a developer basically, exactly. or you're a speculator. We don't speculate. We invest, right? Yep. If I can buy, I don't care what it is, it doesn't have to be the land. If I can buy any asset, 20 cents on the dollar, I'm going to be okay. Yeah. Don't ever Reg- call. Regardless of the market, correct? Correct. Don't ever call me. If you're, if you're out there looking, don't ever call me uh, and tell me that you got a piece, a piece of land for a hundred grand. Um, I won't, I won't answer your phone call uh, <laughs> for sale. I'm not helping yeah. you. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't call us at 40 acres for only a hundred thousand dollars. Yes. Unless it's on the ocean. Then we'll talk. Then we'll talk. Don't call Mark or call me. Wait, Duran, um, I kind so, of lost you. Anyway, Mark. Oh, I said don't. I said don't. Don't call. Don't call Mark. Call me if it's on the ocean. Right. Right. Yeah. You got to go. I know. I'm okay. You good? I'm good. All right. So. What? What's your tip of the day, Mark? You know, I want. I want a good newbie tip. I'll tell you what my 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 newbie tip is. And it's going to be a little self-serving. It's going to be youtube.com slash the land geek. Wow. And go, go to my YouTube channel and get the coffee talk. They're like two minute, three minute segments and they're free tips. And I do them almost every other day. That's a good tip. No, a little, yeah. a little self-serving. Not bad. Little, little. That's an understatement, Mark. Come on. Okay. Let's talk about realpropertyfinder.com again. Great idea. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that is up. Is that going to be your tip every week, by the way? My, my tip of the day, folks, is if you're looking for cheap land, go to realpropertyfinder.com because you won't find cheaper land anywhere in the U.S. Yeah, it's like a commercial. <laughs> right. that's, that's I, not- I, I, want, I want to put it in the uh, disclaimer. <laughs> realpropertyfinder.com could end up lo- I mean, you could lose your hair. <laughs> you could lose everything. <laughs> right. Please don't drink while using realpropertyfinder.com. Perfect. I like go it. on realpropertyfinder.com safely. <laughs> You know what? I, I will say that a, a good site that I, that is can be helpful for, for people. You know, Mark and I would go will generally go to blogs and we'll we'll blog about what we do or what we've done. And and uh, funny enough, Mark and I were actually laughing uh, before we got on this podcast about about this website biggerpockets.com, which I think is a great website and, and and you can utilize for knowledge of different concepts. You can actually find other people to help you do deals there. Yeah, we, yeah, we've we've talked about we've talked about biggerpockets.com in the past. Oh, we have. Okay. Yeah, I, I think so. I don't I don't recall, but anyways, it's a great site. Uh, it's a great tool to use, and uh, I would recommend people taking the time to kind of go on there, peruse the site, and see what what's on there, and if it's something you like, just be very careful because there's one guy that <laughs> might hit you. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what that, that you know 
bigger pockets, I think, is more single family home centric. No, it's than not. Than anything else. It's not? Is it multi unit? No. Everything? No, maybe, maybe you're right, but I, I think I've seen a little bit of everything. Okay. I mean, you can find a little bit of everything, but you're right. I mean, primarily it's home flipping, bird dogs looking for single family home flips, that kind of stuff. But I, I think there are. There are some areas where you can get information about land or people that are like Mark and I that are willing to look, like check things out. And, you know, for me, there's nothing self-serving. I'm not trying to, you know, other than ruralpropertyfinder.com, I'm not really trying to get you to look at anything else. Um, right. So, but it's different than, you know, I would just go, for me, I just go straight to the Land Geek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to the, yeah, exactly. Go to landgeek.com, download the Passive Income Blueprint. That's free, by the way. Be ready to spend some serious money on this information and knowledge, go to landgeek.com slash product and, uh, you know, get the investor's toolkit. All right. So enough self-serving. That's, this is a really self-serving podcast. And I feel compelled to thank Duran Frazier from reserveland.com and, of course, ruralpropertyfinder.com for spending another day and his valuable time away from his family, his beautiful family, to take the time to talk with me and help everyone out there live the dream, buy land, sell land, earn more, work less, and uh, share his tips and tricks. Thanks, Dran. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. All right, everybody. Go again to uh, thelandgeek.com. Download the Passive Income Blueprint. Check out Dran, reserveland.com. Leave us a comment, something. Give us some feedback. What do you want to hear more about? So we appreciate it. See you next time. Thanks. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.